McGee with your entertainment ticket. I'm here for the movie The Good Lie. Wow, this is a great film. But I'm going to interview the writer, Margaret Nagel, and two of the actors, Arno Chang and Kuth Will. They're in this movie, and wait till you see this interview with these three talented people. But I'm Al McGee with your entertainment ticket. Having all read Huckleberry Finn, can anyone tell me what the good lie means? Huck uses lies to survive in undesirable situations. Exactly. But later in the book, the lies change. How so? They change because Huck changes. Yes, keep going. When he tells the slave hunters that he has no slaves, his lie is credible. So he lies well, but what is more important is that it is an unselfish lie because it saves Jim. Jim's freedom means more to Huck than the money he would get for turning him in. So it is a good lie. Could not have said it better. You're the writer of this film, The Good Lie. Now many times when I uh, talk to actors, uh, they improvise. Now did they do a lot of improvisation with your your words, or did they really stick to your words that you wrote? Up to the script. They really <laughs> stuck to the yeah. script. Uh, thank God. Uh, no, if you, I used to be an actor, so I really write dialogue oh. for actors so that they can say it, and, and I, I craft things really carefully. In fact, I, I went through the script with Reese Witherspoon to make sure that every line sat well in her mouth. If she had any questions about a line, we went through it. Um, so, no, they stuck to the script. Thank God. Thank goodness. It wasn't the kind of script, it's so tightly packed, mm -hmm. and each event in the script leads up to another event. It's so tightly plotted that you can't improvise anything. It's not yeah. that kind of movie. Yeah, that's what I saw when I saw the film. Now, Arnold, you're playing Marmir, uh, the Sudanese or... I like the way you say Marmir, man. You say it's so cool, man. Thank, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Thank you. Tell us about him. Um, yeah, no, Marmir, um, he's the, the chief of the crew. Um, of the bunch, he is he's the son of a chief. He he's the one you follow his journey, and you, and you have you, you see you see his relationship with his with his family, and you see his relationship with Carrie, played by Reese Witherspoon. And you know the film. Margaret says it all the time. The film is you you know it's a it's a journey that you see through Mamere's eyes, but then you also see it through the eyes of, right. a, of a typical American woman, which is Reese. And her journey begins with, you know, her not really caring about anything, you know? And through the, as the film progresses, she becomming more maternal and starts researching, starts finding out, okay, you know, these, not, these, these are not just some Africans that just came over, you know? There's something about them, and hence that's why she does more research and starts to love us. Uh, Kuth, now you playing uh, Avatar. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I was a little bit confused in the relation between you and Mamir. Are y'all sisters, cousins, or just really, uh, or just really uh, kinfolk? Um, Mamir and I are brother and sister. Um, I'm the only member in his family that had survived from the Civil yeah. War. And so with the other two characters, Jeremiah and Paul, we kind of um, become, we just adopt each other and become family based on association because we took care of each other. And so in a sense, um, we're the only blood. siblings, yeah, we're the only blood relatives in the story. But that's right. what this that's what this film is is, is great because that's uh -huh. what Margaret wrote initially, you know, it's all about being together. You don't have to be the same blood to be family. And mm -hmm. and, and and it's established so early when they were kids, when they meet up in the line, you know, and that's when they establish their friendship and because of the, the struggles they go through, it brings them together. Margaret, when you were researching this to write, uh, how much you didn't know about these characters? which were based on real life. What I did was, I, I'm a writer that immerses myself into subject matter on every level, like the show Boardwalk Empire, I knew nothing about the birth of the mob or prohibition or politics in 1920, I learned everything. And then we wrote about characters that were like composite characters from that time period. So I learned everything I could about Sudan, about the Lost Boys, about the politics, about the people that sponsored Lost Boys in this country. And then I created a story that I felt was with characters that were sort of emblematic 
of the 3,600 Lost Boys. And in fact, I didn't meet a Lost Boy until I actually had finished with almost the entire script and I had written the whole story because I needed to have a certain distance and be able to sort of critically appraise because if I got too close to someone that would block my ability to be able to write about them and so we created a fund called the Good Life Fund that is going money that goes to all the Lost Boys from the film uh, rather than just picking four out because they right. survived by yeah. going together that was the idea of it. Cool. How much did you know about the Lost Boys? Well, um, I was born in Ethiopia in a refugee camp, and I had an older brother who was a lost boy. Eventually found his way to Kenya, and he immigrated to Minnesota. In, um, and so it was personal for me because it's my own family history. Mm -hmm. And so to go through that journey of learning more about his story was, um, it was uplifting for me, but it's also a, a bit more challenging because he had passed away in 2009. Right. And so for me to revisit that in a sense where I'd, before, I was a little angry about, you know, his story and why this and that. And so I felt like it was kind of a reconciliation process for me. Right. And then how much did you know about Avatar, your character? Oh, Avatar. Um, I was fortunate enough to have my mother growing up. I lost my father in the war. And so Avatar for me represented a lot of women that I knew that were orphaned as children and had gone through this, even lost girls that I knew. And so I felt that it was um, my responsibility to tell their story because not a people, people don't really hear a lot about the girls that went through the lost boy yeah, story. They yeah, don't. Now, when you auditioned for this, I heard I heard a funny story that at first they rejected you, yeah. then you had to send in a tape. Tell us a little bit about that auditioning process for yeah. this film. It was, it was my... I actually heard about this film through a friend of mine. I was doing a play um, at the Old Vic Theatre in London. And then this... Wow. A friend of mine said to me, oh, Arnold, do you have American, an, an American manager? I said, no, I don't. Oh, because I just got this script. It's called The Good Light. You know, it's amazing. You need to see it. And I'm like, okay, are they, are they casting for it? He goes, yeah. So I said, okay, can you, can you send it to me? You know, and then he, he sent me it. So I read it, and then I was like, this is cool. I need to get on this, rang my agent, and I said, uh -huh. yo, can I get, a, can I get an, uh, an audition? Then he, my agent says, oh, yeah, we already put your picture up. You know, we already put you up for that part. But they said, no, you're too short. So I was like, oh man. Too short. Yeah, I was too short apparently. So then I said, okay, cool. Because, you know, most of these men are very tall, like, like Jeremiah. Yeah. yeah, like that. You know, they're very tall. Yeah. So then I just left it because, you know, if you, know, you win some, you lose some. And then like a, like a month later, my agent called me and said, oh, they want to see you now. So I don't know. They probably just didn't find who they wanted. Um, then, they, then I went for the casting. I put myself on tape. They sent it to, to LA. And then. Um, yeah, then they told me to, to, to come to L.A. for more castings. And then I had a, uh, more castings with, uh, with Reese. And then with, I met Ron and Brian, Grazier. Right. Then it, yeah, and I'm here now. And, and you in the film, The Good, yeah. the good Life. Yeah. I don't have any more time. They took that from me. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> but this is very good. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking time with me, Al McGinn, your entertainment no, ticket. Thank you. But also, you did a great job, Margaret, as the writer and mm -hmm. the two actors with this film, great success. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. These Christmas decorations are very elaborate, yes? Oh, I go all out for Christmas. I make my own baby Jesuses out of paper mache. <sighs> but Santa Claus doesn't come to Sudan. Well, he's coming here. So what time should we be expecting him? <laughs> Very late at night. And only if you're good. He sounds like a bugler to me. <laughs> hey, Ramir, I left some groceries on the porch. Can you help me? Yes. Thanks. Help it down! Lloyd! Oh! I like it. You are watching YETicket.com with Al McGee. Movie reviews and interviews. This is YETicket.com. YETicket.com. Your entertainment ticket. We are your entertainment ticket. That's right. YETicket.com. We are your entertainment ticket, that's right.